Hello and welcome to another monthly update or monthly recap for Squad and this month we're going to be looking at the February 2016 update which was published on the 29th of Feb. February is the month of love for Squad. Well that's any month, every month and every month to come. Every day is Christmas with Squad. Crack on. So it looks like in this one, I'm not going to read it word for word, but it looks like we've got some interesting content coming in version 5, which is not actually in what I'm about to show you. And there are some new features in here. We now have foliage bending system. Now, whether we needed this, I'm not sure. And the first thing after I'm going to play this, it plays in the background. The first thing I thought about was on one of the levels when you look down, like the corn fields or the flower fields, uh, sometimes when you look at the admin cam you can see players actually sneaking around in the same grass fields and they don't actually notice each other so whether now when you're actually on a mountain or a hill and you look down will we be able to see the foliage bending and give the position away of the enemy I'm guessing yes I think it, it really will work uh, so this is gonna make crawling through deep dense grass quite an interesting aspect now when it comes to the multiplayer side of it so as you can see in here very nice and the actual audio and everything with this makes me think it's a new map because it sounds ace it sounds like countryside with birds cheeping and singing and all sorts I can get to the birdie bit there you go beautiful what map's that we want this map perfect weather for uh, a picnic and slaughtering the Taliban. What more could you want? So that's the bending of the foliage system, which is new. Awesome. And it looks like a lot of the new features now are going to be UI based. I didn't think there was such that really needed doing, but having looked at what they've actually put in here, they've cleaned it up and made it a lot easier to read a lot of the information, such as we know exactly now, obviously we know what the light, light anti-tank was, but we know which weapon we're going to be getting for which class. So this makes it a lot easier when you're coming in. And obviously a lot of these icons as well have been improved on the spawn screen. So now if you were to click the, let's say, the squad leader, and you weren't sure which weapon you were actually going to get for that, it now gives us a little visual interpretation. Also being an update to your own icon on the map, meaning it's a little bit easier to find yourself on the map. Again, I didn't think this was really a big issue, but it's good to know that the developers are looking at things and feedback from the community, as they have done, to be honest with you, from day one of the pre-alpha. Such a great dev team, and it's just a joy that you can actually contact these people on the forums and actually get a one-to-one -one response from it. It's not often you get a game where they're that involved with the community, and obviously the community love the game as much as the devs so these little features in here are really really nice and the more we get into it the more it's going to grow i may do a video actually to look back at the very first day of the pre-alpha when it went live to where we are now and we'll just see how far we've actually come because a lot of people who've just come in now don't actually realize how far we have come from those initial days of just being able to build bunkers and little things like that to how far we've actually come uh, new features in here are going to be helped with the mousey mousey scroll wheel so you know which one you're selecting again I tend to use the keys for this anyway but for people who want to use the mouse scroll wheel it's now a lot easier and obvious which one you're actually going to be selecting uh, they've also updated the scopes as well so now when we're looking through we get all this here which is slightly dimmed out I suppose it gives you a little bit more of a focus on what we're actually aiming for and as you can see it's a post process effect some people turn that off, so if you want this effect, which I definitely will, because I like all the bells and whistles on, these guys have put a lot of work into it, why would you want to turn them off? But obviously I understand if you've got a, a less system that's struggling with some of this stuff. But again, another really nice feature. They've also updated something which has been a bear bug. I know of the devs and everybody else who's played it is the stamina thing and jumping over walls. Running up to a six inch wall out of stamina and having to jump up and down like a bunny rabbit was just awful. It really was awful. But by the looks of it now, they've implement implemented it now, allow you to jump at full height with no stamina penalty, but with a loss of forward momentum and jump height for each consecutive jump. This allows you to be able to traverse walls with no worry of suddenly running out of stamina and reduces the frustration of the stamina cost. That's probably, for me, one of the biggest updates 
that we've all been wanting since day one so brilliant absolutely brilliant and if we get the animation of them sort of like crawling over even more the better so let's move on a little bit so now they've got a new animation system they've got in a guy called cab and again the animations were always fantastic in this game as with the audio but as you can see he's created some gifs here of some of the stuff that he's updated so I'll just click these awesome I think my favorite one so far is the pistol it's that little vibration of when the hammer comes back uh, here that's just ace attention to detail that, that little judder brilliant another one for the RPG I do wish at some point we'll be able to put the rockets on our back and take them off and put them in the RPG maybe that's too much at this stage because we know they are overhauling all the animation system as you can see looks a little bit robotic when you see it from that side but when you actually see the actual weapon at this side brilliant and we've also got the saw which again I love the little features like that when he puts it down there's a, like a little clink noise if you listen really carefully and his audio work is just amazing there we go nice so as we move on we've also got the G3 A3 it's a German 7.62 NATO battle rifle developed in the 1950s and produced around the world it's still very reliable the rifle has seen many wars and conflicts around the world and is still in use by second world militaries and insurgent groups to this day so we're getting a new weapon always nice to get a brucey bonus very nice indeed and as with everything it's sound ace and uh, it looks like a killing machine whether we'll get a version with a some sort of sight unit on our top maybe not it may be just iron sights obviously this is not a close quarters weapon mid to long very nice wow we're getting tunnels is this is a, a thing that you know i was i thought wouldn't it be ace if you had tunnels that you could fight down into some of those mines um on fool's road and it looks like we've got them now. Uh, Fool's Road release gives us a quick crash course on how game mechanics and code would react to them. Um, what more can we say? Now we'll be fighting indoors. I, can you imagine the, the reverb of, of rounds getting fired down here, the saw and the RPK? I hope it's deafening, absolutely deafening. And with the smoke grenades coming out of here, it's going to be epic. Now we're also getting doors, it's almost turning into America's Army, yeah? we're used to get that I hope it isn't like that, leaving the doors ajar on the opposite side so you could hear the enemy opening them. But another exciting system is we've got doors which will allow players to dynamically open and close passages and further down the track, breach or even lock them. So we know the breacher class is coming from Project Reality, whether we can put C4 on and blow the bloody doors off. Again, that would be incredible, you'd see the blast coming through here, anybody behind it deader than a dead dead it's in its infancy and they'll be alliterating on on it well into the future very nice tension map here Yavrika. continuing to push the envelope of map sizes we're beginning work on a new map called pronounce that yourselves featuring large open expanses and a total of 8x8 terrain letting us open up the full expanse of the 4 before base terrain and provide a real sandbox for vehicle based combat coming over the horizon in its infancy but we will keep you posted now I've had a little sneaky sneaky a while back looking at some of the vehicles in engine and I can tell you the Humvee looks absolutely gorgeous absolutely oh you, you wait it's put armor in the bin wait till you see them looks fantastic um, I mean just look at these every time we see these new screenshots I mean is that a lake Awesome, I can just imagine laying here with the RPK brr, brr, firing up into that tree line. Oh, this looks great. Lots of open open area, nice. Just beautiful, isn't it? I mean, that could almost be a photograph. Very nice indeed. I wonder if we'll get VR support. I'll talk about that in another video. Um, Gorodok, more work has been done on this map and a feature elevated rail system used to break up the landscape and present an interesting tactical obstacle for squads moving on foot. These early stages in the lighting and detail has not been done yet, but holy shit, I mean, come on. Popping along here, lobbing grenades over, RPK, RPG, it's all good. Again, nice one. Firing across, supporting your teammates coming over here, flanking around the bat so you don't skyline. 
all these maps are just amazing. Um, every map we've played, you play it so often you kind of get used to it. Remember the first time we saw Fool's Road with all the grass? Amazing. Yeah, very nice. It would be cool if there was a certain objective that you have to capture. I don't know whether that's getting a little bit like Battlefield, but uh, if you can imagine fighting down here and uh, yeah, fantastic. Operation First Light has been polished to a near finished stage after popular request not for it to be scrapped. Why would you want to scrap Operation First Light? It's fucking aces that map. Removal of the train wreck allows for the addition of additional small village and fields all over the map has also got a good treatment of micro detail of debris and trash to make it feel like the division. Uh, <coughs> a little more lived in. I don't know why they got rid of the train. I quite enjoyed the train, especially when you're inside firing out into it. But why you not to be scrapped. Why the fuck would you scrap it? Anyway, it's out of my hands, that's up to the devs. But I really, really love this map. It's close enough that you've got enough action, but there are long sight lines, you know, for the, uh, the APKs and the support class to get in there as well. Two or three flying her over. Surprised that that's even been mentioned because it, it's a brilliant map. And uh, yeah, looks like they're updating it. Be nice if there were some things in the environment that was that moved, if that makes sense. Even if a, a real train came through a combat zone or something, a plane flew over, just to break up the, the sterile sterility, if that's even a word. On some of these maps. Samari Bala, the Team Deathmatch map at the minute, really, but it's another one of those maps that I like to jump in for half an hour, 20 minutes as a warm up. It's combat, it's fighting, it's death kill, rinse, re repeat, but again, I love it. And when we get vehicles, 50 kills, which we're all waiting for, I'm waiting for. Again, really enjoy this map. And now that we've got flanking manoeuvres, especially when you're on the larger player count maps, that's really going to uh, really going to change it up. Very nice. Chora, which has always been one of my favourite maps, as it looks like it's had an update as well. Uh, they're expanding it down the river and opening up new combat areas. They expect another month to finish up, and then two to three months of detail. So it's, well, it's a long time, then three months, three, possibly four months, uh, before we get that final update, and they're putting in true sky which should just make the lighting even better so that's something for us to look forward to brilliant map always was a brilliant map that one uh, and that's about it for now whether the actual release date is going to be anytime soon it doesn't actually tell us but usually we've been getting an update monthly so it's possible that we may get it this week or even before the weekend and I've just had a text message there to tell me it's out tomorrow I'm joking I'm joking uh, but yeah, another brilliant update. Any questions, leave them in the box below. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you're excited, as I am for the future of Squad. So, uh, yeah, even benders are welcome. See you in the next video. I've been Paraplayers. Squaddy Updates. Bye-bye.